を乗せても美味しいパフェはある意味最強かも Yeah, unless I see some rainbow colored waffles made by this kid, then I ain't buying that for a second, you cheap little Sunday. We open this week with a flashback that'll probably be more significant next week before we cut over to Omni and her massive ponytail. Like, seriously, while this is a good bit to quickly establish her fighting prowess because there's a lot of things we have to establish with this character, that thing on the back of her head can't be easy to move around with. But yeah, we also got hints of her still struggling to overcome her time as Masquerade. I mean, gentle. Brandon actually would have been nice if we had held on this scene, but we then had to cut over to these worthless royals. <laughs> okay, lady, now just take this pillow and press ever so gently. But yeah, New MacGuffin was conveniently awakening and taking on the form of something very marketable. And you can buy that in a set with another toy for only 8,500 yen, jeez. Also, yeah, there's a reason why we decided to mosaic that out, and it's not just because of spoilers. Oh, we're going to have fun next week. The king and queen conveyed this to Rosemary through his pendant that I'm just now noticing has a freaking speaker. Well, can't say it has an impractical design at least. <laughs> anyway, this thing called the light ball, no not that, was apparently something that drew on similar powers as the energy fairies, so yeah, obviously it was going to act as a transformation trinket. Not that King Candy here could figure that out. <laughs> Mm. You still got some time, lady. No one's looking. Meanwhile, our heroines convened at school, and as the tell suggested, so did Amine. They exchanged some pretty nice greetings after everything they had gone through. However, even though this was another nice moment that they could have used to further flesh out their character, they were interrupted by the greatest evil of this entire show, the simps. Um, what's Rosemary doing at the school? Meanwhile, at the Lair of the Bundles, Narcissus revealed that he had come up with a new idea for a monster, which wouldn't really result in a brand new type, but more just a variation, as we'll soon see. Thus, he was going to test it out, whilst trying to warm his way out of that stupid salute. Yeah, it's bad when even your villains don't want to hail anymore. Later, the Precure received the light ball that unfortunately didn't come with Pikachu, but rather this thing. But yeah, I guess this food fairy was going to act as the partner to a new Precure that it obviously wanted it to be Omne. However, it couldn't talk, and thus needed Pom Pom and Memdragon to interpret for it in a not-so-funny scene. Yeah, I think this is supposed to be funny, but the comedy just doesn't feel like it's there when we have to wait on other characters to talk for this thing, and its obnoxious personality certainly didn't help matters. Though, and also it was a parfait, which meant Omni was going to be like a pure parfait, you could say. Oh wait. Just saying, Shiel is a business owner with a trademark, so she could more than easily file a copyright lawsuit. They stopped by Omni's family shop, where the girl was having a bit of a tiff with her wife, who I mean, vice president. And again, as the tell suggested, this was over Omni abdicating the position as the student council president, which Moi here was against, as apparently she ended up cheering her up after a string of failures. And kinda surprisingly, she didn't do this with ice cream, but rather a fruit cocktail. I mean, yeah, they work at a fruit shop, and I guess they could be saving that for next week, but still, come on, who doesn't turn to ice cream when they're sad? Question of the video, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? You can actually see mine in the thumbnail. Anyway, as it turned out, Moi being encouraged to continue her pursuits was more of an incidental effect of Omne's casual generosity. Still, it was a good moment, showing that she can be a good person, even if she wasn't completely conscious of it, and preferably not wearing a stupid mask. And I guess that, plus some previously established stalking, was enough to convince the Sunday to pester the energy fairies into making her the next Precure. <laughs> Anybody got a microwave handy? Omne ended up touching the incomplete transformation trinket, which started to form as soon as she did. Thus, our protagonist tried to talk to her about it, but 
obvious victim of the week was obvious. So again, they cut off a good character building moment for Omni, though at least this one was justified, and they let her keep the glowing heart for now. With that, our protagonist just kind of found Narcissus, though this might have been on purpose, as he did want to show off his new monster concept that involved asking what was 1 plus 1, which Yui seemed like she was legit struggling to figure out. You know, I would actually recorded a whole segment here talking about my issues with Yui and her dip development, but for now, I think we'll hold off on that, as she wasn't all that prominent in this one. She didn't even do a grammar quote this week. All I'll say for now is that they're not taking this character in favorable directions. Anyway, of course the answer was two normally, but in this case, he believed in the concept of the whole being greater than the sum of the parts, so he combined two catalysts this week. <laughs> Oh great, you made Forky. Hey, could somebody trash this thing before it ruins a perfectly good movie trilogy? Seriously, while the fight this week will actually be pretty decent, that's still a really lame design with a very obvious weak spot, but whatever, at least it was made up for by the arrival of the only Six Ranger this show really needs. Hell, Takumi even joined Yui in the famous deadlift sequence. And as a result, the fight was pretty well animated in parts, and better than average, even though again, I don't think they should have needed Rosemary to point out the obvious weak spot, but whatever. Later, they went back to Omni to of course offer her a position as the sixth ranger of this team, but... And again, I'm perfectly fine with this choice, but I guess they gotta sell them toys, so see you next week. This was a... Find enough setup episode for next week's big debut, even though I'm still not quite sold on Omni as a character. I mean, it's obvious we're gonna get a lot more next week, so the jury is still technically out on that, but for now at least, due to a lack of development and agency of the character, she still mostly just comes off as an overly stoic darkness without any of the fun masochism. But uh, hey, Black Pepper is kind of interesting again. Though, that also comes with its own issues as well. All snark and jokes aside, this episode on its own was actually very well paced with a lot of new story elements like the light ball and the parfait fairy being fairly naturally delivered and established. This was helped by the fact that they also circumvented all the show's superfluous elements of this show like the recap and most of all the narrator. Though personally I would have appreciated a grammar quote if only for the sake of a joke. <laughs> All that said, while this episode had no big issues other than the Parfait Fairy being a little annoying, the surrounding Omni arc is still not winning me over. They've just done so little to actually build this character, even though they want us to view her as a sympathetic wooby. And yeah, you could argue that's because Gentle was in the driver's seat most of the time, but even with characters like Twilight, we could see little bits of Toa slipping through the cracks. On top of that, the character had an interesting and charismatic personality that made us want to see what was going to happen to her. Meanwhile, as Omne or Gentle, this character to me always felt like she lacked agency, with her either being led around by her cohorts or in whatever direction the plot wanted her to go. Even in this very episode, her encouraging Moi was more an incidental effect of her being gentle. I mean, nice. You get the idea. Though to be fair, there is also another external issue that's been holding Omni back from reaching her full potential as a character, but again, that's a discussion we'll save for another day. Still, as a result, while this episode was perfectly fine on its own, I just couldn't really get invested because Omni has just felt like such a bit player in her own arc. Not helping matters is the fact that I'm honestly more invested in Takumi as the pseudo Six Ranger of this team, with him even teaming with Yui in a way other lead and Six Rangers have done in the past. Helps that we've established his backstory and motivations before even Omni, and therefore he has a lot more agency. Now don't get me wrong, I want them to change my mind on this, and this episode did do a great job planting the seeds for that, seemingly. They still need to establish a lot of things, like her motivations and backstory, so until the, and pardon the pun, finale to this arc, I'll hold off on my final judgments, and I guess hope for the best. Next week, there won't be a premiere, as I've got dinner with the family Saturday night. Don't worry, we'll still try to get a video on Sunday at least, maybe closer to the afternoon or something. Then, hey, at least I'll be taking this show's advice, and thoroughly enjoy some good, real food. Still, until then though, for now my friends, and if you'll excuse me, 
I'm gonna see if I can make a toy out of this junk to sell to kids. What, if Disney and Toy can get away with it, why can't I?